I'm optimistic and polyvagal theory is an optimistic viewpoint. And it means that it acknowledges that many people have difficulties feeling safe, but it doesn't mean that they are destined to feel that way forever. I'm Dr. Amy, your guide for transforming your trauma into your gift. You adapted to life experiences to survive, but you are not your trauma. We all enter the world thinking that we feel like everyone else. And what we're really understanding is we don't share all the same experiences. Our physiological states are not the same. So even external stimuli affect us differentially. I have this question that I ask people about stillness. Is stillness something they welcome or something they try to stay away from? Now, for me, I really welcome stillness, but for many people that I know very well, stillness is very frightening. It's vulnerability. And what we're talking about is if we immobilize, which is stillness, we are vulnerable. And, but for me, stillness is accessibility. So we can see the same features affecting people differently. And I thought the real, uh, role, let's say, of therapy or intervention is to enable people to feel safe. I didn't realize that feeling safe, let's say, accessible and still, was a trigger for those who carry the trauma history. For those who carry a trauma history, that immobilization, which I'm calling safe stillness accessibility, is a frightening experience to them. They have to get, it's, we would call it anxiety producing, but it's really saying their body is going into a state of defense and, we have, and they have to get out of there, can't be there. Yeah. So much of your work and what you have given us is this emphasis on the need for safety. Yeah. And being able to bring in tools to gently lead people along this step towards finding that connection with themselves as safe yeah. and, and how important that is. We, let are, me, yeah. I'm optimistic and polyvagal theory is an optimistic viewpoint. And it means that it acknowledges that many people have difficulties feeling safe, but it doesn't mean that they are destined to feel that way forever. So yeah. I feel that our natural state is to feel safe in the arms of another and that we can develop strategies to lead us along that journey and path. And we don't have to, in a sense, be an advocate for the way we are, in a sense, keep the world. This, if I become still, I'm vulnerable, therefore I don't want stillness around me, that we can develop toolkits to enable us to expand our experience as humans and not have to advocate being in this very restricted life space. And you have just said it perfectly. What is the reason behind what I do here with the biology of trauma is that, yes, we have to address the biology. We have to address the physiology. We have to look at some of these things that are impacting our nervous system and its ability to rewire for safety even. Yeah. But we also have to start with the experience. And so I don't work with people's biology until I can have them even just be a witness. And we do some of the somatic work and and it's all, it's all bringing everything together. I can't, yeah, yeah. we can't separate it like we have in the past. Sure. So thank you for this. I am going to have to just have you come back and talk about some of the adaptive significance of the dissociation. We weren't able to get to that today. And I would love for you just to give our, your 60 second version of your tilt table and how you have used that in order to help create a felt sense of safety for your nervous system and give people a practical idea for tools. There are a lot of tools in your house. Um, I, what we want to talk about is really neural exercises. And there was a kind of a, illusion towards neuroplasticity, but I don't think you need to go there. I think you need to go into understanding state regulation and moving between states and that we just haven't been able to access the states of our nervous system because we haven't felt safe. The tilt table is my venture every morning into triggering my blood pressure receptors. So I do actually 
quite vigorous tilts from this direction to that direction to challenge the system to build a, so it's not a threat, it's in a sense developing resilience of my autonomic nervous system because blood pressure posture shifts are powerful in terms of triggering a autonomic compensation to maintain constant uh, oxygenated blood flow to your brain. And as you get older, and I'm getting older, I decided that it was important for me to keep a resilient autonomic nervous system. So for me, tilting was that. I had also built around 30 years ago an oscillating tilt table, which no one ever wanted to get off of because it rocked at such a peaceful rhythmicity that was consistent with the vascular rhythms in our body. I don't have that anymore, unfortunately, but it was really quite remarkable. I had people who wouldn't get off of it because they got on and they said, oh, this is, I'm here. And I'm thinking about rebuilding it and redesigning it and making it available. Awesome. We have so much more to talk about and we'll figure out how to create a new oscillating tilt table for you too. <laughs> think about the, our visualization of floating on waves and think about head to toe, not side to side can be dizzy, and but head to toe, like a mother rocking a baby, but we tend to rock in our breathing rhythm. Now slow it up to like once every 15 seconds and the body goes into another state. I love how you emphasize this state regulation. And, yeah. and we do have a lot of tools and a lot of the somatic tools and, and even yeah. some of these tools to help ourselves track and then be able to actually shift and yeah. regulate our own states. One, one final point that the world of trauma teaches you that it is state because one day a person is in a sense fine, and then the traumatic event occurs and there is a mental reorganization instantaneously within a day or, and physiologically. So we know that it is a rapid, it's not a neuroplasticity, it's a state shift. And the question is, can we give the nervous system the appropriate cues to recover, to in a sense, reclaim their evolution, our, our evolutionary heritage of being safe in the presence of another. And this is why I have learned to support my biology, support my nervous system, support even that tendency for the shutdown rather than fight it. Thank you to you and your work. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Amy. Mm -hmm. Thank you for inviting me. Mm -hmm.